back in to our lives, into our homes, into our preaching, into our worship, into our singing, into our music, into our young people. Um, Mother Joel was sharing with me a couple of Sunday nights ago in the, in the evening service and in their, in their ministry at the Super Church in the Holy and the Fellowship Hall that God just came down. And when he looked, the kids were praying with them, they were laying hands on them. And the same thing that was happening in the sanctuary was happening in our children's ministry. Amen. We want our children to be fully exposed and fully engaged with the Spirit of God and what God is doing. Amen. We want to communicate what God has given us to our next generation. We want to perpetuate it by communicating. We don't want to be said of us that was said of, of, of the generation of Joshua that uh, when the Joshua and the elders uh, died, there arose a generation that knew not God. We want to communicate the power of the Holy Spirit and the dynamic of, 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 of spirit-filled worship to our young people so that they can become leaders, they can become spirit-filled, and they can become uh, fully grounded for the generation. It's not, it's not going to get easier, it's going to get harder. It's not going to get better, it's going to get worse. And the only hope is that the power of the Holy Spirit passed on from one generation to another will, will keep that generation and make them salt of the earth and make them effective <coughs> to their neighborhood and, and, and to their schools and, and to their place of work. And God is in the midst of his people. Revelation chapter 12. <coughs> Just two verses there I've been looking at. Found in the verses 10 and verse 11 of chapter 12 of Revelation. I have been sharing on the concept of pleading the blood. My message is entitled, I Plead the Blood. So that is a reality today. That is absolutely essential for us. And here in the book of Revelation, we find in the in the 12th chapter, while this is 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 is, is tribulation. Uh, uh, tribulation theology here, the principles, it's a divine principle. John writes, I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the king of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony and they love not their lives unto the death. Last week I, I, I shared with you um, and began to share with you this message. And I talked about the effectiveness and the absolute necessity of the blood of Jesus Christ for us as believers. I talked to you about the concept that we, we must know our line of defense. I, I find that particularly with, with Evangelicals in particular, evangelicals who know so much about the gospel, whether it be the uh, Pentecostal or, or, or Baptist or other groups that call themselves evangelicals, that, that we are very strong on, on the idea of being saved by the blood. We're very strong on that. There, there are not amongst us who will say, well, we're saved by works, or we're saved by doing this. And this. We're very strong on the power of the blood to save us. But we probably are very weak from there on in, is that we think we're kept by certain things we do. I want to I put an end to that thinking today by saying that we are not only saved by the blood, we are kept by the blood. Amen. We realize that our line of defense and salvation is the blood of Jesus. And then we narrow things down a little bit, or we really broaden things a whole lot, we the best way to put it, probably take a different perspective on, is that we, 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 we live our lives, and, and when the enemy comes, we sometimes think, well, well I've been a faithful church member, I have been a good husband, I've been a good wife, I have, I have prayed twice a day, I have even paid my tithe, I have visited the sick, and so when, 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 when the enemy begins to attack our Christian law and our lives, we begin to count up on our fingers all the good things we've done since we've been saved. And, and really what we're doing here, we don't, we don't mean it, we don't really speak it out. But what we're doing here is saying, well, Satan, I've been all of these good things, so I'm, I'm going to defeat you on those grounds. We're, we're, we're defeated before we even begin. 
Because you see, if we put our good works as a line of defense to, to give us victory in our Christian walk, we are not going to make it. Our line of defense cannot never be our good deeds or our Bible reading, or our tithing, our praying, our church attendance, as good as that is, even as believers, our single line of defense is the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. I plead the blood. And it must be an understanding that how we are kept by the blood as well as being saved by the blood. Only the blood of Jesus can silence the enemy's accusations. If we begin to debate with Satan, he'll always say, well, you, you could have prayed there and you didn't. You could have done that and you didn't. You could have done that. Because now you're getting into the debate with Satan and he always got one of us. But when you say, I plead the blood, he got no argument. He got no recourse. He's got no second line to come back at us with. No matter who we are, how long we've been saved, we need to understand that we have no self-defense. I like that freedom. Church, I have found an incredible freedom in realizing that I don't have to explain myself to the devil. I don't have to explain myself because I claim the blood. I claim, I claim amnesty on the grounds of the blood of Jesus Christ. Sometimes parents will say, did we fail our child? I've, 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 I've been talked to that with parents who, whose children are away from them. And, and, and they wonder if they failed their child because they didn't do this, they didn't do something else, and all this sort of thing. There may have been some areas where they could have done better, but the truth is that the parents, you can claim the blood and plead the blood for your children, amen, no matter where they are in this world and no matter what they're up to or what they're, what's going on, you can claim the blood. <laughs> Not on the grounds that you were the perfect parent, but on the grounds that the blood was shed for you, amen. And when Jesus brought us into covenant with him, we brought our families in. And, and, and we can claim the blood until the Spirit of God gets true to them. And they make that personal confession of Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You see, we have this because of the blood covenant. Our position and our standing is because of the blood covenant. It's not because of something we've done. It's if this covenant becomes effective when we repent and receive forgiveness through the blood. To we come with no merit of our own. This is how we find forgiveness through the Lord. We come with no merit of our own even after salvation. Because we come through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's important for us to understand that we are overcomers through the blood. Let me just finish my introduction by saying this. What is meant by pleading the blood? What is meant by it? I shared with you last Sunday that it simply means the blood of Jesus is the weapon that we use against the attacks and the tactics and the accusations of the enemy. So I am not going to get into a debate with the devil. Jesus never did. If you will, if you will look at the many demonic encounters Jesus had, he refused to carry on a conversation. In fact, if you look at it real close in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will notice that the longest conversation Jesus had with a demon spirit was, what is your name? Now get out. <laughs> he did not engage in the debate. You and I must not engage in the debate, uh, bringing into, into focus how good we are or our abilities or what we can do. We must claim the blood. We plead the blood. It's the weapon that, 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 that we use against the attacks and the accusations of the enemy. And pleading the blood is the strategy or manner in which we will the weapon. I can have a sword. If I don't know how to pull it out, I'm going to get run through by the enemy. But when I, I have it, which is the blood, and now when I plead, I pull it out, and it becomes the, the power that delivers from the attack of the enemy. Amen. It's pleading the blood of Jesus Christ. See, you don't need me to remind you of this, but I'll remind you anyway. Because I might need a little reminder. No, I know. We live in a day of heightened demonic and dark 
spiritual activity. Folk, there are things going on around us that look so close to the real thing that if you pay a lot of attention to it and get in discussion on it, you could probably end up going in the wrong direction. And when the world falls apart, you will say, man, it looks so good. It sounds so good. I thought it was okay. I thought it was biblical. Look, that's deception. The, 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 one of the greatest signs of the return of Jesus Christ is deception. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. Deception. Yeah, that's right. In fact, Jesus said, I used to, I didn't quite understand this verse for a long time. Uh, Jesus said, people should call my name and they say, I am Christ. And I, I thought that the uh, I thought that, that uh, for a long time, I thought that, that, that that person saying they were Christ. But that's not what it means. People are going to come say, and say, yeah, Jesus is Lord. And that's what the only thing you get right. From there, from there on, it's all deception and down, downhill from there. Understand that now. They will actually say, Jesus is Lord. And many people will go after them. But little by little, then it will turn. The blood will be gone. And all the other wonderful things that we stand upon. And I'm going to get there in a few moments. So we plead the blood. It is the strategy of manner in which we will go with them. We live in that kind of a day, folks, when we need to know what the power of the blood of Jesus Christ is all about. In fact, one writer said, as all of Christ, we have the responsibility and the calling from the Lord to plead the blood of Jesus for ourselves, our families, our households, our cities, and wherever we go. Listen to this. The church of Jesus Christ has been given a mighty weapon that can not only protect us, but also bring down the strongholds and kingdom of the enemy. Folk, I see, I see the enemy having a field day in our churches. I see the enemy having a field day in our in our families in our denomination. I'm talking our own denomination today. Some of us are not going to deal with their own. I want to talk about where we are. And, and, and when I, I realize that, that, that what's happened is that they have stopped preaching and stopped believing in the power of the blood of Jesus. And in order to replace that, they brought in many of the social sciences to try to find answers. Now, I'm not against social sciences. I'm not against counseling. I do a lot of it. But I want you to know the best place you can do counseling, folk, and the best place you can do is at the altar. Amen. You got problems in your life? I'm here to help you. But one of my counseling rooms will be the altar. If you're not prepared to meet your pastor at the altar with your problem, you're not prepared to meet him in his office with your problem. Oh, pastor, help us out. We got a problem on our hands. Our marriage is falling from this, that, that, on down to this. And you never come to the altar. If you got big problems, then you're going to stay in those problems until you learn that the altar is a place of surrender and you give it out to God and lay it on the altar before God and lay it on the blood of Jesus before God and leave it there. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord, what's this, what's this blood thing? A lot of churches have stopped preaching the blood, they've stopped talking about the blood, the effect of the blood. At the end of that vacuum have come every bit of deception and dysfunctionality that the world has. Yes, amen. So we have the authority. He goes on right. We must learn to wield it with boldness and confidence. Our Lord has given us the commission and the authority to do so. Well, Pastor, you mean I can plead the blood and I'm not a pastor, I'm not a church. Yes, you can. Amen. Every child of God has been given the authority in Jesus' name to look Satan in the eye and say, Satan, I plead the blood against your attack. I plead the blood against your attack upon my family, upon my finance, upon my job. I plead the blood. Yes, yes. hallelujah. Yes. That don't sound very educational, but I tell you, it's truly faith. Yes. Mm. The blood of Jesus is our protection. Yes. Like the Israelites, we need to apply it though. Yesterday, last Sunday, or Sunday before last, we looked at overcoming through the blood, but there was another part. The other part of what I want to share with you today. They overcame through the blood of the Lamb and through their testimony. Amen. Like the Israelites, we need to apply it. We apply it through faith, but it must be combined with action. Yes. Right. You tell them. Yes. I want somebody to go on your teeth and get out and keep The action on our part is not worse 
But it's action that talks about prayer and interceding and faithfulness and persistence. We think for the blood of Jesus to be effective, we must combine action with belief. Amen. I'm going to get down to the road, beat the road. Too often, too much of the rubber is left behind. <laughs> we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Yes, right. When we get there, I'm, I'm, I'm making a point here. Our testimony is more than spoken words. It is the witness of our daily lives. Amen. Amen. It's the witness of our daily lives. The blood of Jesus is powerful, and we overcome by living according to what we say we believe. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Belief plus action will protect us and give us the victory. We are under attack from the enemy. I experience it. You say, Pastor, do you do? Yes. I experience it as you do. And this attack is designed to discourage, disrupt, trouble, and defeat us. Look. Both say, I get saved because I don't want to be, I don't want to be tormented by Satan anymore. Oh boy, that's a bad reason. <laughs> when you and I stand up and save people, there's a rich spot on us that says to Satan, that's where you need to strike. Yeah. We become targets. We become targets. Because Satan understands the principle of exponential growth and he understands this principle of, 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 of expansion. Yeah. He realizes that one New convert, full of the Holy Ghost and boldness and confidence, is going to threaten his kingdom. Right. He understands that one convert who is a believer in Jesus Christ and is full of the Holy Ghost is going to go and mess up some neighborhood where he could have his way with drugs and alcohol and prostitution and robbery ever since the neighborhood was there. So he says, man, we got to knock this guy out before he gets back into his house and before he gets to the neighborhood and messed up our zone. Right. So you're a target. Uh -huh. I'm a target. Uh -huh. But we don't need to fear that. Uh -huh. Why? Because we plead the blood. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Thank he needs to be the blood of Jesus Christ is our defense. It's our defense. We must fight back. Not by our strength or strategy, but by and through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. I, I, this is so profound that, that I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. You don't have to be a theological student. You don't have to be theologically trained. You can go into your neighborhood and say, man, I wish, I wish I had this evangelism thing like Pastor Russell. I mean, he, he's so well trained in evangelism. Or like Brother Don here, he's a preacher. Or Pastor Frederick and said, I wish I had all of that. You know, I could take it to my neighborhood and, and see God move. This is folk, I want to know something. You can walk around your neighborhood, take eight or nine streets in your neighborhood, and walk along. And walk in that I plead your blood, Jesus. I'm in this neighborhood. My children in this neighborhood. I plead the blood. Lord, not only keep the blood out of church, but save them if they step in. Amen. Bring them on our church to speak. Father, I claim the blood. Amen. If you don't need a theological training to say that, if you need a little help, I'll write it down. I plead the blood. When we start feeding that, let's start to stir. I'll be blood, be blood, be blood. Let's get more stirry move. And let's take them all over claim the blood of Jesus Christ of our neighborhood. Yes. Yes. Walk around your neighborhood and say, God, somehow or other, you allow me to be planted here. And I'm here now, and I'm going to make a difference in this neighborhood. I'm going to feed the blood. I'm going to feed the blood. I'm going to feed the blood. You know what's going to happen? Conviction is going to fall in your neighborhood. Amen. Yes. You're going to have drug addicts one day come and give them death by and say, look, I, 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 I knew where I could pick up my fix. But something began to happen. I got to get fearful. There was something in that neighborhood. I, I quit going to that neighborhood. Until I realized it was the power of the blood of Jesus. Amen. That's what we're talking about, folks. It's true to blood. We must be ready to fight for our children's homes, health, blessings, finances, and whatever is important to us. Pleading the blood, hear this now, releases a spiritual cover that protects and delivers us. I know it's too simple for the educated mind to comprehend. But the truth is, it's true. It is 
not a magical formula. I want to share with you this morning this thought. This is not a magical formula, but an exercise of faith. I'm not talking to you this morning about a, a, a formula. Okay? You, 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 you know what I'm talking about. You get those emails that I do. Say this prayer seven times. <laughs> Sing it to seven friends. And ask them to send us seven more. And you'll experience something. Well, I've never said it. I've never prayed it. And I've never experienced it. Because that's a magical formula. So don't go around your neighborhood and say, Oh, I've got to do this seven times once a day. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. I'm going to miss my show. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Uh, the uh, uh, American Idol comes on the other channel in an hour. <laughs> that will not work. All you'll do is wear a new pair of shoes. <laughs> Don't do that. Right. But get faith in my All right. Or you walk on You will have faith in my God. God put me here for me. Father with faith. I feel the blood on my shoulders. I feel the blood on my shoulders. I feel the blood on my shoulders. And I do this because I have a relationship. It's not a magical formula. It's an exercise of faith. We know the power of the blood of Jesus. But what about the word of our testimony? Remember now, our testimony is more than spoken words. It is the witness of our daily lives. It's the witness of our daily lives. As new covenant believers, we have every right to draw a bloodline that yes. the devil cannot yes. cross. Yes. Let me say it again. As new covenant believers, we have every right to draw a bloodline yes. that the devil right. cannot cross. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Let me just say this. We must learn not to walk away from the bloodline. Praise the Lord. We must learn not to walk away from the bloodline. See, some believers feel that they can misbehave, drop in and out of church, say nasty things about spiritual leadership or, or, or fellow church members, go off in a puff, or just wander around doing whatever they feel like doing, and it's all right. No. When God saved me, He saved me to consistency and to be consistent. When God saved me, He wanted me to find that place of ministry and that place of effectiveness. And then when God gave me the gift, He wanted me to be to use those gifts in for His glory. So God looks for consistency. God looks for permanency. Our lives have got to be permanently exuding the power of God and the consistency of God and faithfulness to God. Amen. It's all wrapped up in this idea of the word of our testimony. Amen. And the word and the best evaluator of the word of our testimony is not ourselves. <laughs> it, it, it's the people we work with. It's the church we attend. It's the neighborhood in which we live. Well, that God! That gives me the woolies when I hear that. You see, sometimes the pastor finds himself in a very awkward position. Some businessman will call or say, Mr. So and so. He's a member of your church, right? <laughs> Mr. So or Mrs. So and so. She's a member of your church, right? So the first thing I got to do is now, who's Sister So and so? <laughs> Before I answer that question, I think about who Sister So and So is. And she's a woman that has a powerful testimony. I say, oh, yeah, she's a great woman of God. But she's one that's so loose living and loose talking and inconsistent, I'll say, well, she attends my church. <laughs> See, our testimony is so important. That's right. That's right. Because right. people draw conclusions about God and about Jesus right. and about the Word of God and about Christianity from our testimony. 
You see, you run with people every week that never go to church. Right. Have no idea who God is. Right. And you are the word of God to them. Yes. Yeah. I know it's an awesome responsibility, but it's true. And that's the reason why, if I mess up to a believer, I need to go back and say, I, 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 please forgive me. I was wrong. I should not have gotten mad. Because they need to see Christ in my life. The word of God says the old came through the blood and the word of the testimony. See, the, the, the pleading of the blood has got to be backed up with a life lived to please God. Understand what I'm saying? I'm not talking about works. But I can, I can repeat the blood of Jesus a dozen times. If I am not right with God in my spirit or with other people or with my wife, then it ain't going to work. If I'm not right in my spirit towards you as a church, and you're not right in your spirit towards me as a pastor or a pastor or staff, you can plead the blood until you have an old week. It won't, it won't do a thing. It overcame by the blood and the word of the king. What is my testimony in the community? What is my life doing in the community? And, and am I identifiable? When everybody else is, 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 is speeding off vulgarities, when everyone else is angry and mad, am I standing there angry and mad and speak? And no. My testimony is that I stand there patiently. You stand there patiently. Because your testimony is how you express yourself. I mean, when someone gives you the thumb or the finger on the 401, do you do you, you it back? Or at 125, you salute them. Have a good day. That's the big, I, I'm just using these illustrations to say that your testimony, your life, what you believe, that be backed up with how you live. Amen. Amen. That's just the way it is. If we're going to overcome, that's the way it's done. That's the way it's got to be. You see, pro believers who don't have a testimony don't realize how close to the fire they are dancing or that they may get burned pretty soon. God calls us to a life of consistency. And that life of consistency is a reflection of the power of blood that offends us. So that they work together. If I have a life of consistency, it's mean I'm covered by the blood. And so they work hand in hand to, I mean, it's fine in here. I mean, you shouldn't, but it should be safe to get a little angry. Okay? Don't try that. Because we're the body of Christ, the family, we don't have to forgive one another. Don't, don't try that. Well, out there, out there, you are being made, God is being measured against your life. And us pastors know that very well. And, and, and I, I, I had an unfortunate incident just a couple of days ago. I went to the Home Depot and, 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 uh, and uh, I'm going to be going there a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, they, they grossly undercharged me for several items. And they were items that were hard to identify. I think they were, they were staples for our hard work. So, they charged 62 cents for a whole big bundle, and in that bundle was 10 smaller bundles, and each smaller bundle was loaded. Well, I don't know how many I had, I don't know how many I used. So when I went back, and the guy told me the, the price they were, I said, whoa, you guys are going to charge me. But I don't know how many I used. And the, the, the whole system was at fault because you know, the whole system had a check in at 62 cents and just a thick dollar in contract. So he said, bring, bring, bring back what you got. He said, how did that work? He said, yeah. Well, five or six months over a man because I've gotten money. And uh, so I said, oh, I'm going to bring them back. He said, we'll give you credit for that. I, I, I didn't even think it's true. You're going to give me credit for something I didn't pay for. <laughs> I said, look, here they are. So I said, I don't want any 
you come. And he looked at me, and you could see the relief on his face. He said, thank you, sir. I've already corrected correct with, with the system. I said, no, I said, I've got to be honest with this. Uh, I, I don't want any credit for those, because uh, I looked at them back and, and got 30 bucks. And they were fully expecting me to borrow my credit. I said, no, I want you to take those plus them back on your shop. The devil said to me, kind of, the mighty home devil will never get $30. <laughs> but see, the home devil lives to be the customer. That's right. After five years. Amen. Amen. It's got to be that way. Amen. It's got to be that way. That's right. It's just got to be that way. And that's the word, that's just a very simple illustration about the word of our testimony. I bet you, as long as I go to home temple, that man here will remember me. Amen. Right? Amen. Because of that, just that very, very simple, is the word of our testimony. It's got to back up the blood of Jesus Christ. So as new covenant leaders, we have every right to draw blood line. And we have every right to, to, to plead the blood. But we also must back it up with our lives. See, the Bible says that God is not not. And whatsoever we sow, we will reap. We think about that song far too often as the unsaved person. You're sowing in sin, you're going to reap in sin. That's true. But whatsoever man sows, including the women, <laughs> that goes for saved and unsaved. Right. If I sow as a believer meanness and, and deception, I'm going to give it back. Right. Because in God's economy, what goes around comes around. Right. It's just, that's the truth of it. And, and so we need to understand that. Don't expect the blessings and protection of the blood covenant if you are not faithfully living according to them. Well, I pray the blood, that's it, I go on and live like that. No, you can't. No, you can't. You've got to walk from the word of your testimony. The children of Israel thought they could do that and let the be disaster. Stay the course, keep the faith, and as you honor God, He will honor you and bless you and cause all that you do to prosper. Amen. Don't ever walk away from the bloodline. I'm going to be finished. Against the combined might of the blood of Jesus and the word of our testimony, Satan's assault will collapse. There will be an assault, but there will be no victory for Satan. There will be an attack, but there will be no report to go back to his hints that, that it, it was successful. The blood of Christ and the word of the testimony. Will, will cause Satan's assault to collapse. It was, remember something, it was a scarlet thread of redemption. And the testimony of Rahab that saved her family. It, it's one of the neatest Old Testament illustrations that you'll find. The, 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 the spy said, anger of God to it, and whoever you brought into your house when we come will be delivered. Two chapters afterwards, after the invasion, they go to Rahab's house, they find her because of what? The scarlet thread, which talks of the blood. And in the house was her father, her mother, her brothers, her sisters, all the extended family, and they came because they believed what she said. Now, she was a, not a good woman. She was a harlot. And so, Many would not believe her because she probably didn't have a lot of integrity or dignity. But when she engaged the spies and she had heard what God had done, she was transformed in her faith toward the God of Abraham, even though she didn't know who he was. And she walked out to her family and said, you've got to come. I don't know if she dragged them. I don't know if she coached them. I don't know if she bribed them. But I know this. When the attack came, she had her family get in Amen. to the word Amen. of her testimony. Amen. 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 That's what I'm talking about, folks. The word of our testimony. Remember, we are redeemed by the blood. After that number this morning, who can, who can doubt that? In Colossians 13 and 14, we're redeemed by the blood, we're kept by the blood, we're overcomers through the blood. There is no magic formula but the application by faith of a spiritual principle. It's not a magic formula, it's the application of faith by a spiritual principle. Let's put the blood back into our lives by faith and by declaration. When we say, redeemed by the blood of 
sometimes, sometimes, sometimes we, we, we are too modest. And so someone means to sometimes get a little dig in at us and say, oh, yeah, you've got to think of that. And we say, no, no, we're not special. We're just ordinary people. Yes, we are special. We are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. So when you say, oh, yeah, you think you're special. Yeah, you're right, sister. You're right, brother. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. That makes me special. Amen. Put it back in our faith, put it back in our declaration, put it back in who we really are as believers. Amen. Let's plead the blood against every evil influence, Amen. every perversion, every spiritual force. Listen, you're living in a neighborhood, you have the right to plead the blood that no spiritual darkness, no perversion, no evil influences, none of those things will come against you and your family. Amen. Amen. In fact, you'll not only save your family, you'll save many others in your neighborhood. Recognize the enemy, use the weapon. Pastor, come on back. Our battle is not physical, it is spiritual. You say, oh, Pastor, that, that's heavy language. It was physical, we could do something about it. Oh, no, I don't think so. And because it's spiritual, that puts us in the zone, doesn't it? What does the Word of God say? For our weapons are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And the three weapons that God has given us is number one, the name of Jesus, number two, the Word of God, and number three, the blood of Jesus Christ. Not necessarily in that order, but all combined into three wonderful and powerful weapons that we have to defeat the enemy. Amen. 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 Through these, we can achieve complete and close the victory in Jesus Christ. But church, I want you to remember something. Every individual here, it's not a magical formula I'm talking about. It is an exercise of faith based upon the blood of Jesus Christ having been shed I claim the blood Jesus shed
lives. Amen. Maybe you're killed a wrong, the wrong way. You can become Christian. You can feed the blood of Jesus among them. And the grace of God is still is effective. Amen. Under the blood of Jesus, saints, what a place to be. Say to me, Pastor, as I pray to God, say to God. Standing at this altar, standing in these pews, as Pastor Victor Reeves. 